<laughs> hey, hey, Dan, will you look at that camera and make sure that he's in the I'm shot? I'm sorry. No, we're good. This, this is, uh, we're down a cameraman today. Hey, welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast, by the way. Does he look good? It's on him. Sweet. Hello. Hey. Thanks. And it is recording. It's showing. Record on the top. This is how we do it. Six years in, this is how we record podcasts. Hey, <laughs> someone in another booth, help us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast, Hello. the official podcast of the Fireside Tattoo Network. I'm Jake Meeks. That's Dane Smith. What? Um, and, and we're happy to be back at Space City. I, I try not to say this is our first episode at Space City uh, because I don't know what order they're going to come out oh, in. But sense, this yeah. is actually the first one that. Oh, we're cool! Recording. Yeah. So I tattooed for the last two days and didn't get to. Uh, yeah, I know how that works. <laughs> yeah. uh, but this is so. This is the fourth one. How many times have you been here? Oh, this is my first one. Oh, really? I, I've done Philly the last. Uh, Eight years. Oh wow! And then so usually I do Philly, and then I uh, before that I'll be, God, one of the February shows. It doesn't matter, but yeah. I'll do Philly, and then I usually I'm I'm pretty good for you know February months. But yeah. this time I was like, have you ever done Philly? I've never done. I've heard a lot of good things about Philly. Okay. Everyone says we should. It's do It's like. giant. Yeah. There's thousand booths. It's a little bit much. It used to be when uh. I first did it, it was two hundred booths, and now it's a thousand booths. Whoa! And it that's is that's a huge jump. Negative twenty degrees. Oh. Every time, and I'm telling you, like when you fucking walk out of the convention center, you're like, I've never been colder in my life. Oh. And I'm from Indiana. I'm from a pretty cold area too. And then coming to fucking, coming to Alabama, this is great. It's fucking warm. It's yeah. nice. It's a smaller oh, convention. Great. It's more intimate. People yeah. are a lot nicer. Everybody, you get to like hang out with your friends. You're like, oh, you're over there. I'm gonna say hi to you because I can actually see you. Right. Which is great. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I do. I do love this. We we started doing this show the first year. We've been this one year, so I guess this is our, this is our third. It's the fourth, the Space City. But um, Shaquem reached out uh, when they were doing the first one just yeah. to like see if we'd want to come in and help promote it. And, yeah. and, and I didn't tattoo. We just were out in the hall oh, cool. and just did shows. And uh, it was the hardest convention because everybody was tattooing. And the, and the level of tattooers, tours, level of tattooers weren't quite as good as they are now. It was the first year. Oh, so yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there were some good tattooers, but there were some that were just like, meh, you know, still yeah. learning, still figuring yeah, it out. I get it. Uh, no, there were almost no interviews to be done because everybody tattooed. That's the whole good time. though. That's yeah. what you want to hear. You know, yeah. you don't want to hear when people like, "Oh, what did you do?" You're like, "Oh, well." Like, so I think the problem with most tattoo conventions nowadays is that people are going to the conventions just to like, kind of like kick tires, yeah. which is like totally fine. Like, they want to see something they're not used to experiencing. They want to like, they want to witness stuff being done. And I understand that, but as a tattooer standpoint, and as someone who travels quite often, it's like, "Yo, man." Yeah. What do you got in your pocket? How can I get it out of your pocket? And how can I get you happy and out of my booth? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. That's yeah. like that's like, what it all I'm here down to, to. I'm here to make money. I'm here to do my job. I'm here to like make you happy. But mm-hmm. what it comes down to is like, if I ask you like, oh, what are you what are you trying to get? And they're like, nah, I don't like tattoos. And you're like, <laughs> what the are you doing fuck here? Fuck, are you here right now? Right. Right. Uh, that has been the good thing about this show is that yeah. everyone does. Everybody get tattooed. wants to get tattooed. Yeah, everybody that's walked by the booth's been great. Everybody's like, "You got time today? You got time today?" I'm like, "Yeah." What do you want? And they're like, "Really?" I was like, "Yeah." Yeah. And they go, "Oh, okay." Yeah. <laughs> they're like almost like stunned. I'm like, "Yeah, I can fucking do your tattoo right now." Yeah, what do you that want? Is, that is awesome. Uh, we were talking a little bit before we started about. Um, so you're starting a. Uh, a supply company, and you're out of in- yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah, right? Indianapolis. Yeah. And so you're, you're starting. What's the name of the supply company? The uh, supply company is called Cream Tattoo Supply. Cream. Uh, so I did it for two reasons. One, I'm a huge hip hop fan. Yeah. Two, Cash does rule everything around me, <laughs> right. and as well everyone else in the tattoo industry. Right. And three, it's fun for branding because you can make everything drippy and uh, wet and yeah. gross. Yeah. And so our logo is like an old, like vintage kind of skateboard looking cat that's like literally oh, melting. Seen it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's really it's it's a fun marketing kind of scheme. And it's also just like you can do funny things like, you know, you can do Macho Man Randy Savage like holding like some cream like cream <laughs> right from the top. Right. Like just weird just stuff like that. So yeah. My our whole purpose with this supply company was putting like more power into tattooers' hands, being a tattooer owned company. Like I'm buying I don't have any investors. It's me. Huh. It's all me. I'm paying for it. Oh, I am. <laughs> do you have Do you have a partner in it though? I, I do. My okay. my friend uh, who is the shop uh, assistant, Chad. Oh, okay. His name's Chad Magnus. He's fucking great. He basically I tattoo a lot. I'm booked out till June. I'm busy as fuck. I tattoo every day. Mm-hmm. I'm a busy guy, but with his help and like with him assisting the shop and being familiar with like the you know just the runnings of everything, it really helps out. He can go to the post office and ship things out, and he has done the website. Mm. I can't do that shit. 
So that so you had no well I'm I'm guessing as far as business experience outside of managing your own books yeah. or managing a shop yeah it was far as far as manufacturing distribution no idea it, no idea what no happened. idea I didn't know any of that stuff it's it's a whole new world it was like learning that Santa Claus isn't real <laughs> yeah and the Easter Bunny isn't real because you're you're watching all these companies and you're looking at all these products and you're like seeing all these different ways and all these different brandings and everything comes from the same place it's China. Which we all know that because, you know, to think about it this way, if you go buy a box of cartridges or a box of needles, like needle on bar, okay, you get 50 needles on bar and they're going to run you about 20 to probably 25 to 30 dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you got to pay for branding, you got to pay for the hands to go through. But that box of needles is only like four or five dollars plus the shipping, which is probably about two dollars a box and the branding, which is a dollar a box. So you're probably about ten dollars. But it's like everything comes from about six factories in China. Mm-hmm. So everything you're getting, like I and I'm, I'm going to say this right now, as a supply company, as a tattooer, if you are a busy supply owner, I mean a busy shop owner, and you have tons of busy artists, get your fucking shit together, get all your guys's together, and go on fucking you know a a, a, a wholesale like mm-hmm. s- something or whatever, and buy it all together. You don't need that fancy branding. Mm. You guys are going to save a lot of money in the long time. Don't even buy from me. Mm. Don't buy. I want you to buy from me. I'm going to be yeah. cheaper and be more honest with you, but like. But to be honest, like, put more power back in the tattooer's hands, you know. Take it away from, like, and I and I have tons of friends with these big companies. I do, and they're awesome. But, like, take take the power back, you know. Take the power back in your hands, you know. Pay for the stuff without all the middle manning and all the investment corporations. Like, it's great when you have companies like Black Claw and, like, uh, you've got, you know, Grimy and Safari. Mm-hmm. They're doing all that, like, stuff for tattooers and really, like, looking at the products. But you got a lot of people that are going to these companies that don't, know anything what they're selling and they're just they're just spewing this stuff out and just trying to get you to buy it and right. like they're great people and they're trying to make a living for their families and i'm not trying to talk any shit but you know put more power back into tattooers and and really think about you know if you're a big huge busy shop and you guys are friends and you guys are down get on a wholesale site order some fucking samples find what you want to use or whatever and then just buy your whole fucking supplies for a whole year yeah. for like 600 bucks <laughs> that's <you> great that's <laughs> great advice i hadn't thought of it that way I, we have talked to a couple of business minded tattooers or shop managers that that talk about the money that they save just buying and bu- like buying yeah, their supplies six months at a time or a yeah, year at a time and it's a lot you know you got to yeah. account for chinese new year on january 14th <laughs> to february 13th which the, of the all the factories are closed really for a whole month so yeah. you got to account for that for the month for a month yeah, oh, man, it's, it's a communist country, man. They got to yeah. close together. You, know, you guys are all taking breaks. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's like as a business owner and as a shop owner and as a busy tattooer, it's like it just makes so much more sense to buy in bulk. You're not going to have that fancy branding, and it ain't going to be cool, but it's going to be the same product that you're buying from, you know, companies like Cheyenne, like Kraft Cartridges and Cheyenne Needles. Like, they're all made in the same factory. Yeah. It's all the same stuff. Yeah. It just doesn't have that cool snake oil rubbed all over it. Right. And I get it. You know, when you're sponsored and your companies take care of you, like, I've, I've been sponsored by companies. I've done that shows. I've, I've done that whole route. And, you know, it's great, and it's awesome they take care of you. But when it comes down to it, it's about it's about putting power back into tattooers. It's about putting money back into tattooers' families. Yeah. And it's about, like, it's about not, I guess, not, like, succumbing to, like, greed or, like, letting those companies, like, kind of get a hand on you, you know? And it's, like, they don't give a shit about tattooing. They yeah. don't care. They don't like tattooing. So was that your, when you started Cream, when you ha- when you decided you were going to start Cream, was that the idea behind it was just to, you had recognized the value of just buying in bulk mm-hmm. and bypassing the the brand? Yeah. So what made you decide that you wanted to brand it and sell it? So the idea for branding and selling it is that, to be honest, like if I want to get quality supplies into tattooers' hands at a cheap banner, I have to brand them. And I have to do a logo and like do a piece of art. Because tattooers, if you see, we're just like normal, very visual people. Mm-hmm. So if you're walking around and you see a bad, ugly logo, you're not going to have any interest in it. And I, and like I'm saying right now, like I want you to buy from me. Don't get me wrong. Like mm-hmm. I want to retire eventually in my life. <laughs> Right. <laughs> we all want to retire, right? right. <laughs> but uh, again, like you know, I'll if you ever want any help or anything, like I've been working with a couple shops about like I'm gonna buy, I'll buy your tubes all the way up front. You know, you just pay me for like a giant order, and I'll just buy it, and you can pay like pretty much wholesale. Huh. I don't care. Like I'm, I want to, I want to make a profit, and I want my friend Chad to make a profit. You know, with the company, mm. like we want to make some kind of money off this. But what it comes down to is that, man, fuck just given our shit like fuck fuck just giving all the power away and fuck just paying tons of money and just like 
you know, like let's make it, let's make it more like a camaraderie, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you said you know everything does come out of China. There's almost mm -hmm. nothing that that's in the tattoo yeah. supply world. Uh, uh, a couple things: stencil paper, spirit, yeah. Yeah, spirits spirit. in the United yeah, States. In the United States. Uh, not that's it. Uh, yeah, not too <laughs> aftercare. Much. Aftercare. There's a lot of aftercare products. Okay. Griffin Salve is from here. Okay. They're great. Uh, Second Skin, which we carry, is from the uh, United States. The wrap is not from the United States. The uh, Sanoderms product is not from the United States. Uh, okay. But, I mean, it's 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 great. It's good stuff. Are you able to control – you mentioned that everything comes out of just a handful of factories in China, but they do – have quality like as far as the mm -hmm. quality of the plastics uh, that yeah. they're using and mm -hmm. the molds or whatever it is they they do break those into different grades don't they is it uh, are you able to like you're, you're able to make manufact so like if you found a tube that you really like like a good example is Tassel has the uh next gen 3 tube or whatever anyway uh it's a company called fancy plastics in uh china and so what they do is like uh, a company like Tassel will be like oh we really love this tube it's great but we don't like the grip around it uh, can we change the grip? And they're like, yeah, well, you know, you got to pay for a new grip mold, which would be like anywhere from three to five grand. And then you've got to, you know, do a mini minimum quantity order, which could be anywhere from like <laughs> 10,000 tubes or something. Right. It's a lot. Yeah. But, uh, you know, in the long run, it's like, oh, that's a big that's a big change. But in the long run and like the grand scheme of it, you know, it's really not that bad. You're going to spend that much in a year. It's the problem is really having the business mindset to be like, okay, I'm going to spend this money in supplies and I don't have that much money or capital sitting around. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand. Fuck, man, go out and get a credit card, man. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> go out and get a credit card and max that shit out. Just pay it off slowly. Be like a payment plan. Yeah. yeah. And then in two years, you'll be like, man, I saved like, like $3,000. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting. I'd never thought about, uh, uh, thought about it from that standpoint where you can just you can do anything. But, yeah. You can do any kind of tube, too. You can do, yeah. like, steel. You can do, you know, uh, Black Claw did this really cool biodegradable uh, cork. Oh, you yeah. Know, that was super cool. Yeah. It was a really, it was a really like, they're trying to cut down on their plastic use, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. And they also switched all their uh, packaging to, like, biodegradable cardboard and stuff, mm -hmm. which is really neat. Try to help the waste. We go through a lot of waste to send yeah. yeah. Mike, why can't we just go back to the old days with a rag and a wash bucket? Yeah. You know? <laughs> One thing that I that I noticed, and someone I don't know if someone brought it up to me first or if I had noticed, uh, once the – we had talked a little bit about Bunker Hill Capital yeah. buying Kingpin yeah. and buying yeah, Tatsol yeah, 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 and yeah. all that. So once the investment groups got involved, they want to know – how much we're actually using yeah. so they're really been they want pushing, accountability yeah they've been I pushing single use stuff so mm -hmm. it's, they don't want you buying like a whole tub of um of say uh stencil cr um application cream yeah. they want you to buy it in single yep. packet yep. uses because yep. they yep. want to know yep. how many yep. does it actually take to yep. do a tattoo they're yep. trying to like gauge the industry yep. and see how they can better monetize yeah it. and it makes it makes sense you know like as if you it sucks to think about it as a tattooer because you're like, man, that's fucked up, man. I, why can't it just be the old day? Give me right. a big old tub. I want to stick my hand in there and just keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's put the thing about that is that if you're an investment corporation and you're buying into an industry that you're not familiar with, you're looking at it on a business standpoint, and it makes sense. But as tattooers, we're looking at it like whatever is easier, what's cost effective, what works the best and goddamn it doesn't matter if it comes in a fucking rainbow box and it's fucking sparkly as shit. Yeah. We just want it to fucking work yeah. and we don't want to pay an arm and a leg. But when you're an investment corporation, you want to push those single serving things so you can manage every single thing that's going through it. You can make sure that you're putting your money into the right thing. It's just, it makes sense because, you know, you don't want to spend, like I had to buy from my factory <laughs> yesterday, two days ago, I had spent, I don't know, like $20,000. And I, you know, I went through every single list, and I and I know what tattooers use. Uh -huh. So I was like, you're not getting no fucking, like, 11 mags. Like, you're not getting a lot of 11 mags. Like, yeah. tattooers don't use 11 mags. Yeah. I don't use 11 mags. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, so as a tattooer standpoint, it was pretty easy to figure out what we use, what we don't use, and cut the fat. How, but how are you figuring that out? B based on what you and your shop use, or are you getting just... Uh, so we did a trial run of uh, green cartridges, mm -hmm. and I wanted to make sure that everybody liked them. I love them. I love the uh, the solder on the the taper of the needle is like it's really long, mm -hmm. so it holds a lot more ink. So you can take a nine round shader, and I can do a line like that fucking big with a cartridge, and it's solid and it's thick, 
huh. in one pass. I'm using a DMC machine, so it's kind of cheating. Yeah. It's that DMC Dan Cuban machine, which oh, is basically yeah, yeah, like yeah. cutting someone's arm off, which yeah. is great. I love it. I haven't used that. <laughs> I haven't used. I, I'm using his newest Sidewinder. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But the I haven't V6? used him. Yeah, it's great. The V6. I oh, love it. It's great, man. The, you uh, want to cut someone's arm off, man? You got oh, the machine for yeah, it. Yeah, man. It's it, it is it like uh, Dan over here was saying. Uh, Yesterday we were talking about that V6. Yeah, uh, it's great. It's like it's like a secret. It, like it makes tattooing easy. Bam. You just like bam, dude. It's like drawing with a sharpie. Well, and it's great because you know Dan Cuban. He's a he's an engineer. He's a tattooer. Yeah. That man is a fucking. He's 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 keeping it in the industry. He's keeping it. He's he's like really focusing on it. He knows what he's building because he's a tattooer. And that's a problem with a lot of the companies nowadays is that they're getting into this industry because they see the money flowing in or whatever, but they don't know what's going on and they don't use anything. So they're just trying to just throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. But as a tattooer, you know, it's like you know what works. You know what doesn't work. Like it, man, man, that's cool and gimmicky and clever, but. Yeah. There was a fucking company in Philadelphia that reached out to me last year that was like, hey, would you be interested in trying our new banter script? And I was like, excuse me, what is that? And they were like, oh, it's this, uh, you ever seen like draftsman like things where basically it looked like a, like almost like a compass like this and you were to hold a metal tube and then the machine would be attached to the other side of the tube. And I'm like, I'm not trying to do circles all day. That's kind of fucking weird. I, I don't understand. Say it again. So it's, it's basically like, you know, the compasses, like where you would draw yeah. like a circle, right? Right. So pretend your machine is on the end of that, and you're holding the one that's touching the paper. So you, yeah, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, why the fuck did you make that? And I get, you know, cool if that works for you or whatever, but like that's not gonna catch on. Also, that's a metal fucking tube. It's not autoclavable, and it probably yeah. is autoclavable, but like, you ain't gonna fucking do that. Yeah. That just seems like another fucking that step. That's bizarre. It's another step. Yeah. You're not breaking the ministry or mold. I'm like, how many people did you get to try that that really was fucking into it? Yeah. I, and that is one of the things that comes with an industry that's growing. And we've obviously hit marks as far as, like, annual revenue. Something that, that people are, are investment companies uh, that look for industries to invest in. Tattooing has hit a mark that has caught yeah. the attention of a lot of people. And oh yeah, and like you it's said, money. they're just throwing money at a. Uh, they're throwing money at it, seeing what sticks. see what sticks, seeing what they're going to make money off of. And you know what? You can't fucking blame them. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. If I was if I was a business venture and I were to look at tattoo industry right now, I'd be like, oh my god, like you guys are fucking pirates. You guys are sitting around yeah. with all this cash in your fucking hand. And you're not like really managing anything. You're just like going for it, right? Yeah, I get it. It makes sense. And, you know, if you're a business-minded person and you see all these people that are just, like, throwing money at things, it's a pretty smart idea to, like, be like, I can fucking get some my hands on some of this shit. Yeah. Tattooers aren't going to know better. Like, No, absolutely. And if you, you know, whenever that Bunker Heel deal first thing, ha when yeah. that first happened, people were asking, we were talking a little bit on the show about it, and they're like, well, what do you think that they're going to do? I'm like, I think they'll probably make it easier and yeah. faster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll streamline, streamline the process. Streamline everything. Super smart. Uh, and you know, and I'm not and I'm not talking shit about that at all, because yeah. I, I get why they did it, and I get, like, fucking Kingpin's great. Tansel's great. They're awesome companies. They do care about tattooers. They do a lot of things for tattooing, and they're nice people. But, you know, like, and they did a lot of PR after the the bought out was, it, they, they were doing, like, a lot of videos of being like, oh, we're still, you know, tattooer, like, you know, ran, we still care. And, like, I really appreciate them. They're awesome people, and they care a lot, and they try. But, yeah, when you're when you're a major corporation, a major investment corporation, you've got to make the end fucking game. you got to make your revenue. Yeah. you got to make sure things are accountable. It's got to run like a business. And that is literally, like, oil and water to the tattoo industry. None of <laughs> yeah. half of us don't fucking pay yeah. taxes and yeah. half of us don't know what the hell is going on with our books and half of us don't even have our appointments drawn. <laughs> they show right. up and we're like, you got an appointment? They're like, yeah, man, we scheduled it like yesterday. You're like, oh, man, I was high on peyote when I said that. Shit, <laughs> right. I didn't know you come back. Exactly. I'm always amazed at when we come across very high level tattooers, really well known tattooers who are still cash only in their own shops, you mm -hmm. know, wherever they are. It's like, yeah. Hey, oh, we got an ATM in our shop. Do What's you? up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you want? Yeah. Go get oh, that I don't guy. got. I don't. You know, I don't got. Oh, we got an ATM right here. I'm gonna go to the ATM and be right back. I'm like, oh no, it's right there. Yeah. You want to use it? And they're like, ooh. <laughs> right. You know, man, I got this thing in my car that I left on in the oven, and yeah. you know, I gotta go, and the water bill didn't pay, and you know, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go. That and you know, the funny thing is, we're probably helping people a lot because we're we're making sure that. We're, we're policing them enough no, to make sure that they have the money yeah. to buy what they're trying to yeah. buy. But the other side of that is 
now a lot of us are doing you know i i do mostly large scale work so yeah. my tattoo on average costs five or yeah, five thousand dollars probably yeah so imagine if you went to a used car lot and there was no tote the note it was just like cash money right now yeah there, nobody would have a car <laughs> nobody would have a car <laughs> right. you know what that might not even be a bad idea to be honest because <laughs> yeah. you know what there's a lot of people that get into things that are probably a little above their means and they get excited, like housing. That's why the housing market crashed. Everybody was like, yeah, I can afford that two hundred grand house. And yeah. then that mortgage came in. They were like, fuck, man, uh, this is real expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. Uh, you had mentioned earlier getting into uh, to building the supply company, the challenges you might have just selling at your booth at shows. Yeah. Like small, just, yeah. just selling cartridges. That's the way it is. With Explain that a little bit with no compete clauses. So a lot of companies, like you got to think about if you're a major corporation and you're going to a convention, you need to make it worth your weight. So a lot of times corporations will sign deals with companies, with conventions to uh, basically make sure that they make their money back. So that way they would be like, okay, well, if I'm going to, like uh, here's a good example is this. So if Eternal is at a convention and Kingpin is at a convention, Kingpin cannot sell Eternal Ink. Okay. Because there's no compete. They can't compete with themselves. They're selling their own ink and they're going to make a profit. They're like, well, Eternal's like, why would I even be here if you're going to fucking sell our own ink? Mm-hmm. It makes sense as a business standpoint. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it's got to be. So, like, if I go to a convention and uh, a, a major corporation is there and they have a no compete contract, I can't sell needles, tubes, or cartridges at all unless I'm selling something that they don't even have at all and it's super random and weird. Like, oh, I'm selling candles that smell like green soap and, uh, right. You know, petroleum based, blah blah blah. And they're like, they'll let me do that, but you know, it's they've got to make money back. But you have to reach back. out to them. To, I mean, wh- what I do it out of respect. Okay. I do it out of respect. I do it out of you know making sure that I'm not stepping on any toes. Mm-hmm. A lot of those corporations are great people. They have families. They have things to pay for. You know, when it comes down to we're all people. Mm-hmm. Granted, I will choose a tattooer over a non-tattooer anytime. Yeah. But the whole thing is like everybody's got to make their fucking bread. I get it. I'm not trying to fuck anybody over. Yeah. I wonder whose responsibility that really is to, I guess, probably the, the promoter. Or the promoter. It's the promoters usually. Uh, yeah. I'm going to Hampton Roads uh, in March, and I reached out to Can- Mike Can. He's an amazing guy. He's, t- he's an awesome tattooer, and he really cares about his tattooers and conventions. And uh, I have a friend friends with Kingpin. I know they're going to be there. And I reached out, and I was like, hey, do they, you know, are they cool with that? And they were like, no, they got to no compete. I'm like, that's totally fine. Like, I'll reach out to Brian. And I emailed Brian Stover, and he's an amazing guy. He's super nice. And I was like, hey, is this cool? And he was really respectful. And he was like, no, man, like, you can't really do that. We're trying to make our money. And, like, it's a small show, and we got to make it worth our trip. And I'm like, I totally understand. Like, that makes sense to me, man. Yeah. Again, like, no harm, no foul. And, and I guess that, I mean, for one thing, it's it, it it's nice that you have a, enough forethought and respect to, to ask. And my first instinct is, like, you're selling one product. They're selling yeah. a thousand yeah, products. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's a little ridiculous. And my whole thing, I, fi- I made a joke for a while. I'm like, man, I'm just going to sell hot dogs. <laughs> right. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to have a bun with a box of needles in it. And be like, yo, $20 hot dogs. You want a $20 <laughs> hot dog? And they're like, you can't do that. It's food. I'm like, okay, I'm going to sell some art prints, $20 print. You get a free box of whatever. It's the piece of like a paper, man. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like they do in a GC when you want to buy pot. You can't buy pot. you got to buy a donation. Uh, or buy, like, a, a bag or a pr- right. something like that. You're like, oh, it's a bag. And you're like, it also comes with a pound of weed. And you're like, I'll take that <laughs> I'll bag, take please. Bag. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, but from their standpoint, the right now you're just selling yeah, cartridges. But cartridges. Help it, yeah, and, and maybe you sell $300 worth at this show, and then they're good cartridges, so you yeah. sell $1,000 worth. The next thing you know, you're selling $10,000 yeah. worth, yeah. and then and then they are not selling cartridges at their show anymore. Yeah, yeah, exa- exactly. And from a business point, it's good. You know, it makes sense. And, uh, you know, and I and I went through probably six, seven factories of different cartridges looking for cartridges that I liked, and I still found issues with every single one of them. Even the ones that we carry right now, they're amazing, they're great, but once in a while, they'll fall out of the metal. If you're using a reusable, like, uh, metal cartridge grip, mm-hmm. Uh, once in a while, they'll fall out, but they're amazing. They're great, but so do Cheyennes. The Cheyenne housing separates from the tube and from the reservoir, separates and fucking shoot out at people sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That happens, and that's something you can't control. But as a tattooer, you want it to be perfect every single time. And like, so once it becomes big enough and a lot of people buy stuff, obviously the company is going to be like, we don't want you fucking selling on the show because then you're going to fucking, no one's going to buy cartridges from us if you're selling those. Right. And you're like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. We got to make their money. And yeah. I get it. Yeah. Pay for your family. Well, I'm I'm excited to see. I, I've I've this is the first time we've caught someone that's just because you haven't you're, you're not selling them yet, right? It's coming. Uh, March I'm selling cartridges right now. Oh, cartridges but right. Uh, but your webs. I looked at the website. It's not. You're not. Mid-March. Guys aren't in. Mid-March. Yeah, we so we 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 bought. So probably about the time this episode comes out. Yeah, actually, I bought. 
I say we. I wish someone bought other stuff with me. Oh my god. Well, uh, I bought uh, about hundred boxes of cartridges and like did a trial run and did it for fifteen dollars a box for twenty, which is a super cheap deal. If you buy cartridges, it's a great deal. Yeah. So I bought a trial run and basically sold. We sold like seventy boxes in the first three days. Yeah. You know, we I wanted yeah. I wanted feedback. I wanted people to let me know if they like them. I wanted to make sure that like because I have a shop of seven people. But seven, only one of the other person uses cartridges, so I'm just like a very small pool, and I want a large pool mm -hmm. to figure out if these are worth a goddamn before I fucking spend twenty thousand dollars. Right. And so, I did a small run and did really well, and everybody liked them. Uh, and I, at the show, I've sold by like five, six boxes, and uh, Matt Stebley bought one. He's my booth mate right now. Yeah. Uh, and he said he really liked the 14 round liners. I'm like, man, I like them too. He goes, they keep a lot of ink. They they suck it up real well. I'm like, that's exactly why I wanted to carry them. And the housing is really thin on them, so you can see what you're doing. But again, as a tattooer, from a tattooer standpoint, mm -hmm. I made sure that yeah. <laughs> I I handpicked all that shit just so that way it wouldn't be a fucking crapshoot and a fucking oh you want to use this? You can kind of make a tattoo with it if you <laughs> hold it just a certain way and you know right. look at it in a certain light. It'll work. Yeah. So you're selling them in boxes of 20? Yeah, boxes Good. of 20. I don't know why boxes of 10 drive me so crazy. <sighs> okay, here's the thing about that. You're, I am going to be selling uh, the other cartridges that I'm selling are boxes of 10, but I'm just going to tape them together. <laughs> but the <laughs> green sense. ones are 20, and then uh, the needles are 50, and then tubes are only carrying inch and a quarter because nobody fucking uses inch anyway, and the only yeah. reason you buy inch is because you couldn't afford the inch and a quarter. <laughs> right. or And then you're going to wrap it in fucking Coban or paper towels yeah, anyway. Yeah. And then you bought you bought the inch because they're out of the inch and quarter. Right. We're just gonna carry inch and quarter, twenty dollars, right. big fucking grip, you know, twenty twenty dollars, fifteen tubes, like just call it a day. It's cheaper right. than fucking other companies, yeah. and it's quality, and it's not it's not fucking, you know, it's not uh, rainbows and unicorns and glitter, but yeah, it'll but get the job done. It'll get the job done. So why why the Ten in a box. Is that a, just a manufacturing deal? How it's some a manufacturing, the manufacturing deal. I tried to it. get them to change it to twenty or whatever, and they didn't seem like they wanted to go for it. Uh, okay. But I think when I rebrand it for the second run of stuff, I'll probably get the, the twenty boxes. Cause it's like twenty a box. Like no one really. Ten is a mar ten is a marketing scheme for companies. That's why they're doing it. They make also, more money off ten. Think yeah. about it. You sell ten. You sell for ten of them in a, in a box. You're gonna sell the box for. I think other companies sell them for like fifteen dollars for ten, and then you can get for 30 for 20 and it's like that's a lot and you're yeah. like but you're gonna buy it yeah 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 I, I it just seems to me to be like i like Cheyenne. i've been using the cheyenne craft cartridges yeah. like the yeah. white ones i like them and they're you know they're closer in price to like um yeah. to like t-tech or someone yeah, like yeah. that the company but called a uh, fancy or yaba makes those okay yeah but it still just drives me nuts i have a limit i'm in a private studio i have a limited amount of space mm -hmm. and like and I want when I look at a box, I want to, I just want to know if there's a full box there, I, I can get 20 tattoos done. And whenever I see a kingpin box, or not a kingpin, whenever I see a Cheyenne box, I'm like, oh, there's only 10 in that one. Yeah. Don't forget that. There's only 10 in that one. Yeah, well, it, people are more comfortable with spending like $11, $12 than being yeah. like $36. They're so like, $36. Yeah. And you, you use a busy tattooer that's doing a lot of big work. You don't care because you're like, well, I'm going to use it eventually. But if you're in a street shop, you're just trying to fucking make tattoos. Like, I've, I've been in a street shop for fuck i don't know since i started really i was in a private studio for like two months and i hated it and drove myself insane because i wasn't yeah. anybody to talk to yeah that's and a I'm, challenge i gotta yell at people and i like the environment of a street shop where you people walk in and being like yo man my homie ricky did this in the basement with a fucking guitar <laughs> string while i was fucking chewing on a belt i'm like dude ricky's fucking killing it man <laughs> yeah. where'd you get that at yeah yeah Exactly. Yeah, that is a challenge with a private yeah. studio. I, that, I, I miss the back and forth. Um, yeah, I <laughs> it's like a bit th much. It's, it's distracting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I um, I do like the long periods of concentration and stuff yeah. like that, though, and not being and yeah. Not oh being, my god, no yeah. Distractions, with so. big pieces, especially like, yeah. and I do a lot of big pieces, sleeves, back pieces. I'm booked out yeah. for a while. I hate saying that. It sounds so yeah. prestigious, but I do a lot of more big intricate stuff. custom pieces, yeah. and. It is, it's a lot, and I do a lot of my pre empt work at home, so that way everything is pre-planned, so that way my client comes in, we fucking start, we get ready, we're done, They're all the all the hullabaloo, all the back and forth is done. Yeah. So that way there's no, there's no them coming in, I got my dick in my hand, and I'm like, oh shit, uh, what were we doing? Right. And then I got all the banter in the back, screaming and yelling at my friends, and someone's out of fucking printer paper, and no one knows who bought the last printer paper, yeah. and then the fucking stencil paper's gone, and... Oh, did we get stencil paper from the supply guy last week? Or, oh, man, there's no paper towels in the bathroom. And it's like, what the fuck? Just yeah. fucking do it. I'm not your fucking dad. Yeah. Yeah. Just fucking do it. Just go buy it. 
I'm not going to just fucking do it. Yeah. 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 All right. I know you have to tattoo. If people want, are interested in Cream Tattoo Supply, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. the web? Uh, how do they just CreamTattooSupply.com. It? Uh, uh, it's it's just, there's an Instagram page as well, right? Yeah, there's an Instagram. It's just Cream Tattoo Supply. Okay. I wanted to do Cream. But then I thought people would be like, you know, what are you doing? I'd be like, no, I'm selling some cream, <laughs> right. man, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, droopy shit, put it in your hand. But uh, yeah. So just Cream Tattoo Supply, and then uh, my Instagram is just danesmith.jpeg. Uh, it's just me and my buddy that run cream. Uh, he's an awesome dude. He's just, he's really down, he's really on time, and he'll show up, and he'll fucking do his job every single time. And he's, awesome. like, a real passionate kid. I hate calling him a kid, but he's, like, 24. Yeah. And everybody thinks I'm, like, 24, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not old. I'm going to be 30 uh, next month. But oh. uh, So it's it's been nice, man. It's great. So Thanks awesome. for having me on here, man, by the way. I really appreciate so it. Dude. Yeah, it absolutely. Great. It was I, a good I weekend, it. right? Yeah. I mean, I loved it. This is the perfect type of um, podcast environment for me because I, I can tattoo a couple of days, kind of pay for the trip. You know, yeah, and, oh, yeah, uh, seriously. And then get a full day of podcasting. And once I get in podcast gear, we can just roll. So mm. we've got a full day hopefully going today. And, That's uh, awesome. Yeah, and I'm Until excited. Until that music starts up and fucking gets yeah, so Yeah, then we're loud. done, man. Once it the band was starts, we're done. Really good. The music here is amazing. Yeah. I was like fucking really impressed with the talent. Yeah. But Jesus Christ is loud. It's loud. Yeah. It is There's loud. There's no podcasting. Yeah. Over I just it. I just do hand gestures to my clients and yeah. I'm like, does this look good? Are you okay? And they're <laughs> right. like, Yeah, it's yeah. good, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a challenge. Even w- one year we were outside, like out the door, and we still couldn't podcast with the band playing. Oh yeah, so I'm right loud. next to the stage. I get yeah. it. That's crazy. So. I'm I get it. I'm going to let you tattoo. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. man. We'll see you guys. I'm going to go fucking ruin this dude's life. Do it. Do it. All (laughs) right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time.